Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode in the Simple Nutrition Insights Podcast. I am your host, Leonila Campos, and I am excited to talk about this topic because it's not something that we really talk about, you know, when we are focusing in our nutrition goals, our fitness goals, but it plays a huge role in our progress. Right. And so I did a, a whole series, you know, nine days. Today is the ninth day of going, you know, doing a life workshop um, of a variety of topics. Right. And so one of the topics that I talked about was about mindset. Right. That was Sunday. Uh, and it was very powerful. Right. Because again, it's not something that we really visualize ourselves thinking. Right. But our mindset, our mind, the way that we process things, the way that we think about things plays a huge role, right, in our overall success. So I said, why not, you know, talk about that uh, in a podcast episode because it's something that is meaningful, it's something that can help more people. And so I really wanted to, you know, re really d dig deep into that. And so I actually created a handout for you right that you can download and you can use it so i am going to share that um i'm going to share my screen so if you're not um seeing the video don't worry right you can always go back to the video um just look look my name on youtube leonila campos and you should be able to see me or you can um i think the name of the channel is simple nutrition insights so just like the, the podcast you can also find it uh, in the show notes at the bottom so let me share my screen here so we can view that if I can find it uh, right here. Perfect. So while I'm, I'm sharing it, right, when we think about, okay, what does, what does mindset mean, right? There, essentially, there are two, there, there are two types of mindset, right? We have our fixed mindset. And we have our growth mindset. And so when we think about more of a fixed mindset, right? That is like things that don't change, right? We are set in a way and that's always the way that is going to be, right? Or we usually use the words like I can't or I can't do that or it's more on the negative side of it versus like, a growth mindset, right? That could be looking into the obstacles, could be looking into like why things happen, but in a positive way, like, yes, that was a challenge, right? Maybe I didn't do, do so well, but let me learn from that experience, right? Let me use that as a way to leverage me and do better next time. And so it's, this is extremely important, again, when we are focusing on our nutrition goals, when we are focusing on our fitness goals, because things are not always going to go the way that we want them to go, right? Oftentimes, the majority of the times, things are going to come up, right? And so if we take those things as negative, as like everything, you know, every time this happens, like I can't seem to do things right, or like what's the point? That's, it, that's a fixed mindset, right? Versus like, I'm human, I'm going to make mistakes, things are not going to work the way, the way that I sometimes plan. And that's okay, right? Let's keep moving forward. Well, let me give you a more specific example. And this happens often, right? More so because we have learned, you know, diet society has said, we see it everywhere that, hey, in order for you to lose weight, you need to stop eating X, Y, Z. You need to not eat um, cake or cookies or whatever the case may be. So then we start to categorize these foods into good foods, bad foods, right? So when we do eat a food that we enjoy, but we have placed it in the bad, in the bad category, then what's going to happen? We're going to feel so guilty, right? Um, because we ate something that we enjoy. That's a, such a horrible feeling. And so then all these you know, thoughts rush, you know, they come rushing to us and we feel overwhelmed. We feel like a failure. We feel like we can't do these. We feel like we're never going to succeed, right? Because we're already seeing ourselves from something negative, right? And we have the fixed mindset versus, right? Like not putting those foods in, in any category, right? There's no bad food. 
uh, unless if you know it is a poisonous food or physically you know it's making you sick. But there's no we shouldn't put you know uh, foods in good category, bad category, right? That is going to prevent us from feeling you know, all kinds of ways when we do eat something that we enjoy. And then we have these other feelings uh, and thoughts of, well, what's the point now, right? I already ate this piece of cake or I already ate these cookies. Like everything else that I have worked so hard up to this point is wasted, right? Which is absolutely not the case, right? You, especially if you have been building up, right? You have been working consistently and you are, you know, changing things, even if it's one step at a time, right? You are making progress. But we're allowing this negative thing, right, this fixed mindset to throw it all, all, all away, right, versus seeing it in a more, in a different way, right? Hey, yes, I had this cake. It was so delicious. I really enjoyed it, right? And it's something that I feel comfortable eating. And it's not something that, you know, I'm going to see it as a negative thing. And it's okay. Okay you know, let's keep moving forward, right? I have these goals and this is what I want to accomplish. And these foods fit into this plan too, right? So see that difference? It, it In our brains, right, it makes a humongous difference. So really, really understanding that, right? So let me share this now that I have it all set up for you. Again, I'm going to add it into the show notes so you can download it, you can practice it. But I really encourage you to really think about that, really understanding mindset right like what is what is a fixed mindset what is a growth mindset right again fixed mindset is the belief that abilities are static and unchangeable right we can change but as humans right we change we evolve we do things differently and i think it's so important to really understand that right oftentimes i have clients that come to me and they say you know what i'm doing used to work before right? And it's not working anymore. I'm actually seeing negative changes, right? But we are at a whole different phase in our lives, right? Maybe we were doing that when we were younger or when we didn't have kids, right? Or when we didn't have a, a, a desk job, right? But now at this stage of our lives, we have to change things, right? We have to adapt. That's a growth mindset, right? We have to feel okay with that. Otherwise, we're going to be struggling every time, right? And you can make that decision. You can make the decision of, I want to be struggling every time because I have this fixed mindset or I'm going to embrace the changes, right? I'm going to adapt, be flexible, and learn what I can do at this new phase of my life, right? Which is, again, the growth mindset, the belief that abilities can be developed, right? Through effort and learning, trial and error and adjusting and um, just being flexible. So when we think about how that impacts our fitness and our nutrition, right? It's again, hearing those words, I can do this. I'm not good at this, right? And if it's something new, right? If it's something that you haven't done, um, if it's something that maybe you're giving it a try, then you know, it's normal. It's normal to feel like you cannot do that, do it at the moment, right? But working together, right? And giving you those tools, giving you that guidance, that is what's going to help you to be able to do it, right? So seeing it as, a, you know, in, in the sense of growth mindset, like it says here, I can improve, right? Challenges will help me grow. And, and that is true, right? This is challenging and I'm getting the tools, I'm getting the support that I need and I'm learning to do new things and that's okay. Overall, that's, that's what's going to help me get better. That's what's going to help me improve. So I see this a lot too with nutrition, right? When we start thinking about, okay, let's figure out the challenges, right? Let's figure out how we can create this individualized plan. How can, you know, together we can create a plan that is going to work for you. Um, and oftentimes I hear, you know, you know, I've done meal planning and I hate cooking or I don't like X, Y, Z, right. And it's great. It's great that you know what you don't like, right. Now let's figure out what are the things that you can do? What are the things that you're willing to do? Right. And using those tools that I'm providing, using those skills that I'm going, that we're going to learn how we can see change. Right. So it's, it's 
it creates a huge impact, right? Same thing with, with exercise and fitness, right? Oftentimes I hear, you know, I, I don't exercise because I don't know what to do, right? Fixed mindset versus, hey, I really want to start adding strength training, right? And I know I've never done it. So what I, I am going to do is I am going to hire a personal trainer, right? Because I, I want to be able to do it the proper way. I want to be able to establish those basics. I want to be able to, to learn proper form and really understand, you know, the movements, right? Imperfect. Or if you have maybe more knowledge on movement and, you, and maybe you've done it in the past, okay, I am going to create a very specific plan that I can continue to do and I can improve, improve and, and evolve, right? So see how the difference is. And again, it plays a huge role, right, in impact uh, on our goals, having that fixed mindset versus growth mindset, right? A fixed mindset could be, I can work out because I don't have a plan or because I don't know what to do, right? Challenges, they are challenges. But do we want to progress? Do we have these goals? Okay, how are we going to accomplish them? What are the tools that we need? What are the resources that we need, right, to make that change? So don't just get stuck there, right? It's, it's okay to have those challenges, but now we need to do something about them. So let's keep going here. Common mindset challenges, right? Really looking at your barriers, such as self-doubt, right? Feeling incapable or unworthy. So we really have to do a self-assessment, right? As to if I find myself saying the word I can't or um, I'm not able to do it or X, Y, Z, right? Do a self-assessment as to where, where are these thoughts, right? Where is this fixed mindset is coming from? Or if you feel, right, incapable of doing something, asking yourself why, right? Why is the reason that I feel that way? Because it's going to, you're going to learn so much about you, but you're also, it's a, it's a way to create, um, to create solutions, right? Another common mindset challenge is procrastination, right? Delaying workouts or healthy habits. Um, so really looking at, okay, why is it that I'm delaying my workouts, right? Is it because I, when I don't want to do them, right? Definitely a challenge. Uh, and so we continue to delay something that we don't want to do, right? Or that our brains feel like it's overwhelming or annoying. Um, same thing with meal, pre meal prepping, right? Or cooking our meals or going grocery shopping. It's those emotions, right, that we attach to it that maybe are causing these, these common challenges, right? And so a lot of the times we're going to, we might have to do things that we still find annoying and that we still have to get done. And so what is really going to help, right, is creating these systems for yourself, the systems that are going to help you to get in more of that routine, right? Because habits are not created just all of a sudden right? You really have to work on it. You have to be consistent in trying to do it um, at the same time as possible, right? Believe it or not, our brains thrive in a routine, in a routine way, because there's not unknowns, right? There's not unexpected things. And so your brain is able to like function that way. Uh, we might feel that's not the way, right? We might feel like I don't like routines and I don't like, that's probably why you don't like, but your brain actually likes that. Why do you think kids do so well in a, in a routine um, environment, right? Because they already know what to expect, right? This is what happens at this time. This is what happens at this time. And oftentimes, if something is disrupted, right, within that routine, uh, it creates this confusion, right? And they, they don't like it because their brains don't like it. Same thing as humans, right? So in order for you to... Uh, manage that challenge, right? Really create these systems for yourself to help you get, get that thing done, right? If it's a workout, okay, instead of delaying it, let's just build a routine so we can get it done first thing in the morning, or we can get it done as soon as we get home. Or if, if we need to go to the gym, let's make sure that we carry all our things, right, in a backpack, in the back of our trunk, and we can go from work to the gym. Because that in-between step is causing us to not leave the house anymore, right? You get comfortable, you get distracted, you start snacking, and then all of a sudden, those 30 minutes that you were going to spend at the gym, 
are gone, right? So really look at the, the, the reason why you're delaying things, right? Another huge one is negative self-talk. Oh my goodness. I hear this a lot, so much with my clients, right? Like really harsh internal criticism. We can be the worst critics, self-critics, right? But imagine what that does to your self-esteem. Imagine what that does to your motivation to do things, right? It crushes it. So uh, what I usually ask my clients is that, will you say those words that you're saying to yourself? Will you say them to a friend? Will you say them to your mom or sister or someone that you love, your, ch your children? And oftentimes, I want to, like 100% of the time, they say, no, I wouldn't. I would never say that. So why are you saying them to yourself, right? You matter. If you don't, if you don't do positive self-talk, if you stop doing that harsh internal criticism, how are you going to be able to grow? Right? How are you going to be able to find the motivation and the positivity, right, to continue to do things? It's difficult. Right. If the day after day you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, you know, all these negative things or when something doesn't go the well that the way that you wanted it, the first thing that comes to mind is you're a failure. Right. You should be doing X, Y, Z. But instead of changing it right into more of that growth mindset, like, hey, yep, I am not feeling it today, but we're just going to do our best right? We're just going to take it one minute at a time and we're just going to do our best. See how that feels? See what the difference is? So focus on not doing any more negative self-talk, right? Remind yourself, okay, if I wouldn't say these words to a friend, to uh, my child, to someone that I love, then I'm not going to say them to myself because I love myself and I matter, right? So remember that. Um, because all these things, the self-doubt, the procrastination, the negative self-talk, they can be huge barriers that can hinder your progress and decrease your motivation because they're so negative, right? Like if you think about being with someone, if you ever been with someone that is very negative, right? And everything is bad and everything, you know, all these negative things, then you start to feel that way, right? Because you're like, oh man, that's rubbing on me. And I was such a happy person, right? I was, I was a really positive person. But because I've been, you know, with that person for so long, I am like turning into that person, right? So change your internal persona. How can we shift that fixed mindset into a growth mindset? What strategies can we use? You have to embrace the challenges, right? Don't see them as um, difficulties. See them as an opportunity to grow right? Like, okay, this is a challenge. I'm going to take the challenge, right? What can I do to help me grow, right? How can I learn from these challenges? Setting realistic goals, right? Because when we set these more realistic goals, right, that helps to not feel so overwhelmed. If we think about like this humongous goal that is going to take us years or even months, right? Simplify it. Simplify it into very small, actionable steps that you can celebrate the wins, right? Every time you accomplish them, and that will provide, right? That's going to have an accompanying effect to that bigger goal. But you have to set those realistic goals and uh, celebrate the small victories. You know, I I feel like as humans, we again focus on the negatives. We focus on the things that we're not doing. We focus on the things that we should be doing, right? And we forget the rewards, right? We forget to celebrate those wins, to celebrate those victories, even if they are extremely small. You know, it's interesting because if everything is going so well and we're having, you know, impact and we're having victories, something along the way, come, you know, comes in, you know, a negative thought is thrown or like a challenge, right? And now we're like overwhelmed and like we're feeling a little bit negative. We're going to focus so much on that one thing. Maybe we had along the way, we had like a hundred positive things, a hundred victories. And this one thing, right, that created a challenge is what's going to hold us back, right? Because we're so like, we're holding on to that, right? And instead of learning from it, like, whew, we were doing so well, right? And something came up 
let's learn from it, right? Because most likely we're going to face that down the road. So let's figure out why that happened. Let's figure out how we can go up about it and let's learn from it, right? Um, so, but celebrate your wins. It's interesting because every time um, I start a session with a client, that's one of the first things that I ask. Let's talk about your wins. Let's talk about the things that are going well for you. Let's talk about uh, the positive things. And even though I'm asking this question, the negative start to, the negative things, the things that are not going well, the things that they should be doing, just start to, to flow, right? And that's okay. I let them vent. I'll let them tell me their, their story. And then I start to find the wins, right? I start to find the things that they're doing well. But because they're focusing so much on the negatives that they haven't been able to step back and really see, you know, the, the victories. So we work on that for sure. Um, some practical tips, right? To really help with that growth mindset. Daily affirmations, right? Uh, for example, I have here, I am capable of achieving my goals, right? I can do these. Um, I have the knowledge or I, I am able to do it, right? So having daily affirmations, that can, that can help, right? So, you know, it could, could be even as simple as every week I'm going to choose a word, a powerful, a powerful word, powerful word that um, I going, I'm going to use to remind me, right? For example, um, warrior, right? Or um, love uh, or self-growth or something like that. Something that really resonates with you, right? And you can say, this week, this is the word that I'm going to use. This is the word that I'm going to um, to fall back if I'm feeling, you know, that I'm more, going more into the negative aspect of it, that fixed mindset. This is the word that I'm going to use, right? to shift me into more of that uh, growth mindset. Um, journaling, right? Um, journaling it can be a huge way to see your progress. Also, maybe lack of, because you can always reflect back, right? Okay, this is what I was doing, and I was doing, you know, I was seeing results, and then somehow this week, things shifted, things changed. Let me go back to that week and see why right? So it, it can give you that overview. It can give you that reflection. Um, I have clients that do journaling, right? For their nutrition and their, and their fitness and their water intake and their sleep, because these are all the things that we talk about, right? And so it's easier for them to be like, yeah, let's reflect on that. Let's go back and see how, you know, what my, what my journal says, right? If, if you prefer to use an app, there's tons of apps, right? That you can use to track that. But you have to have some kind of data, right, to help you see your progress. Because we cannot just rely on the scale, right? We know that the scale is going to change. We know that the scale is not the reflection of your progress, of what you're doing, of what you're building, or the habits that you, the, the strong habits that you're creating, right? The scale is not going to tell you, oh, you built a new habit. No, it's just a number, right? If you just rely on that number, you're always going to be frustrated, right? Because that number is going to change. It's going to go up and down. It's going to not change. And so you have to really find a different way to measure your progress. Again, if it's by journaling, is it by tracking your sleep, whatever are the goals are that you're working on, you have to find a way to track your progress. Um, visualizing things, right? I ask my clients all the time, Let's visualize next week, right? How does next week look like for you? What do we need to really work on? What are the things, what are the, maybe the possible challenges that, that you can foresee, right? Because visualizing something really helps you to understand what you need and understand maybe the obstacles that you need to be prepared of, right? So not only that, right? You can also visualize, let's say maybe you're setting up a new goal. You can really visualize the goal, right? The end point, your destiny. But not only visualizing that, then visualize how the journey is going to be, right? How you are going to change, how you are going to grow. Because essentially, right, the journey is what's going to 
be the most powerful versus the destiny, right? We can go, let's say if someone says, okay, here's the magic pill, right? To help you build muscle. And you're going to build muscle tomorrow, right? Or one week. And you don't have to do anything, right? So what do you learn? You don't learn anything, right? Once that pill is taken away from you, then how are you going to maintain? How are you going to continue to see progress? You're not, right? Because you didn't develop, you, you didn't grow with the journey, right? So visualize your goals, visualize your success, visualize your journey, uh, do it week by week, right? How, how, is this, how is next week going to look for me, right? How is this or next week um, going to be for me, right? And what are the things that I need? So really working on that. Um, we talked about building consistent habits, right? Consistency. I can't emphasize that enough, right? It's going to take time to build consistency. It's going to take time to build habits, to change behaviors that we've created for years. So we really have to understand that. And we can say, I want to have instant gratification, right? When we buy something new and something shiny, we get instant gratification, right? We were so happy, but that goes away, right? It's like when you when when your kid wants something so bad, <laughs> and you already know, right, that as soon as we buy it, they're gonna spend an hour maybe on that thing, and then it's going to be somewhere else in the room, right? Somewhere else in the house, and they're not even going to remember it. The same thing right? We, we have to really learn to not want something to have that instant gratification, right? Especially something that involves nutrition, you know, building those strong nutrition foundations or building those strong um, fitness foundations, right? They're going to take time. You have to put in the work. And so really keeping that in mind, right? Uh, but what is going to help with that consistency? Creating schedules, right? Creating systems that are going to help you achieve them. So that could be, I'm going to schedule my workouts and I am going to do them Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 12 to 1230. And this is what I am going to do. See how specific it is. There's no reason for our brains to like wander around trying to figure out what we're going to do. And we spend those 30 minutes just trying to figure things out. Same thing with nutrition, right? This is what, I, what the menu looks like. This is what we're going to have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Monday through Friday. This is the grocery list. Let's buy the ingredients. See, you remove all the obstacles versus like, I'm going to go day by day, figure, figure out meal by meal. It's going to be extremely difficult to build consistency because number one, we're busy. Number two, when we are really hungry, that critical part of the brain that says, oh, let's think about what we want to eat. It's not going to function because you're so hungry, right? Who cares? <laughs> just go out, you know, let's just buy something because I'm really hungry. So you really have to understand yourself, right? You really have to find those systems that are going to help you be successful, right? And so nobody else is going to be able to do that for you. I mean, we together can do it, right? But we... We have to have that open communication and I have to really learn what, what your needs are, right? Because if you don't tell me, I can guess, right? I can guess what you really need or what your struggles are or what your challenges are. And that prevents me from really, really providing the support that you need. But you can do it alone too, right? Like being super honest with yourself with like what systems you need. Um, overcoming setbacks, right? Like what's going to help us to overcome setbacks and things that maybe are going to prevent us from continuing to see progress. Um, and that's understanding that that's part of the journey, right? It's not that we're going to go from point A to point B straight shot, right? Then everybody will be doing it. <laughs> and so this journey is like ups and downs. And sometimes we have an area where we just are stagnant. But that doesn't mean that we're not doing anything, right? It just means that we're just there for now. We're just maintaining and that's okay. And so I think really understanding that that is part of the journey uh, can, can help, right? Because when we get there, then we already know this, we're respecting it. It's okay. 
let's just maintain here. Let's take an example of plateau, right? Uh, maybe we're just, our bodies are needing a break, right? Maybe we're, we, we were in this deficit for six months and now our bodies are like, you know, you need to give me a break here, right? Or you need to feed me a little bit more because we've been doing this for a long time. Um, and maybe that's what we need to do, right? We'll give our bodies a, a break and then we'll reassess our goals, right? We'll, we'll reassess our progress and create new routines, right? Create new, a new plan to continue to help you see a change. But oftentimes what happens is that when we have a setback or when we see a plateau, then automatically what, what we think is, okay, this is not working anymore, right? It, it was working, but it's not working anymore. But that is not the case, right? We just have to keep going, right? It's part of the progress. Um, and that is it really. So just as a recap, right? The difference between growth mindset and fixed mindset, really understanding, right? The difference in that a fixed mindset is more, I can't, and like, this is a failure. Nothing's going to work for me. Nothing can change. It's always going to be the same versus a growth mindset, right? Seeing these obstacles and challenges as part of, part of the progress, right? And as learning experiences, um, really creating the, this, this strong foundation, right? Creating these systems that are going to help you achieve your goals, right? Be realistic, um, visualize, visualize your, your, uh, your goals, visualize your journey, right? One of the things here, I'm sure it's here too, but really uh, building a strong support system, right? That is either uh, a mentor, that is a coach, that is a dietitian, your personal trainer, um, your spouse, your friend, whoever you feel comfortable with, com comfortable with, that you can talk about these things, right? Sometimes journeys that we take, these more specific goals that we have, um, may feel like it, it feels lonely, right? If we haven't found that really strong support system that can help us with accountability or just help us with like, like feel that we're related, right? Like, hey, you're going through the same struggles I, as I am going because we're on the same, essentially on the same journey, right? And that can play a huge role um, in, in, that, in that growth mindset. So again, you're gonna have the, um, just this, this work uh, handout, right? That you can go back to it and really understand yourself, right? Really pay attention to your mindset and with any goals, right? If you found yourself thinking about more, having more of that fixed mindset, work on, on changing it, right? Work on shifting to more of a growth mindset. Stop doing the negative self-talk. I think if I can leave you with anything, I want you to stop doing that self-negative talk. It's not doing, doing you any good. On the contrary, right? It's probably just putting you, you down. So if you don't want anybody else, right, I would probably, I would hope that nobody else is talking to you like the way that you talk to yourself, right? So stop doing it for yourself. So definitely, you know, work on that. But that is it, uh, my friend. I hope you found this episode um, impactful. I want you to practice the things that, that I talked about, really work on that. Even if you pick one thing, right? Maybe, maybe again, that self, that self-criticism and the negative self-talk is really speaking to you, right? Catch yourself, catch yourself as you are starting to say these things to yourself, right? And reframe them into positive things. Things that you would say to a friend, someone that you love. But I'll see you and talk to you in another episode. Stay safe and stay strong. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.